Good morning, everyone. It snowed last night deep in the woods of Maine while sleeping out here. Uh, I don't have a temperature reading quite yet until I idle for a minute. I gotta get out, clean off the truck. We got a couple inches of snow last night, and we have at least an hour and a half before sun comes up. We'll start driving around and see what kind of cool things we might find out here today. Look at the beautiful snow-covered road. We're the first vehicle to drive down here since it started snowing. This snow is so fluffy because it's cold out. It's only 12 degrees. All I had to do was pull out and slam the brakes on everything just slid off. Didn't even have to get the snow brush out. It was awesome. So now we're gonna drive around, warm up for a bit, and then we are, we're probably gonna have the sun coming up in maybe an hour and a half. That'll be nice. We're gonna move deeper out. As you can see, we're not super deep into the wilderness now. We still got a few power poles because there are some houses in this area. I sleep very well on these cold nights out here. I'd much rather be very bundled up than sweating at night because I can't fall asleep if I'm sweating, but I can fall asleep if it's really cold out. This was good. I was able to heat up nice and warm, nice and fast. Some good poppers there. Well, maybe we'll have a good sunrise. Today's high temperature is supposed to be right around the freezing mark, so it'll rise a bunch once the sun starts coming up. I just realized I could put bigger lights on here. If the road's a mess in this area. They've been doing some trimming and maybe even some logging about to happen here to the left. It's now about quarter of six in the morning and the snow is coming down harder now. Still no tire marks on the road. It's really nice being out here. It's all secluded. No one really around. Don't expect the roads to be slippery. No one's packed it down yet. That's when that would start happening. See all the potholes? A lot of potholes in this section of the road. Gotta keep it slow around here. It's now six o'clock. No sign of the sun coming up quite yet. All right, everyone, it is finally light enough outside that I would be able to see without the lights. So right here, there's always a beaver blockage. I'm very curious if it's here today or not. I want to get out and take a look, see what's going on. There's no flooding now, and the beaver probably won't be able to build anything back in these weather conditions. Just want to get out and have ourselves a little look. It's about quarter after six now. No other vehicle tracks out here. Temperature has gone up a little bit. It's now about 18 degrees over here on the discharge of the pipe Where the water's coming out. It's not freezing as you can see The rest of the body of water has already froze. It's pretty cold out. The road is completely frozen Not icy yet, but once you get a bunch of trucks packing down a couple inches of snow That's when it gets really icy and you might even have to chain up Here's some debris we pulled out of here last time or a couple times we get down and we look. We gotta get all the way down in here. Take a look at this. What do we got? Yeah, we got a little something. 
All right, we can go ahead and get the big high boots on. Give that a little try. Maybe we can get a little this ice cracking over here on the other side. Maybe we can get a whole bunch of water blasting out and maybe it'll go over all that. That'll actually look kind of cool. We're not gonna wait until the sun comes up. We're gonna get it done now. All right, so I'm just adding additional lights out front. I love being out here in the middle of nowhere like this. These places that are like this in the wilderness, when you get out 50 miles or more from the nearest town or anything, you can go literal days in the winter without passing another vehicle. So now I just added a bunch of lights out here. I got my floodlights on. Yep, so I got my searchlight on this side, hoping to light that up a little bit for you. I got that spotlight, I got the off-road lights all on. I do have a jump starter in case I happen to kill the battery, but I doubt I'm gonna kill the battery with those lights and the 10 minutes will probably be here. So let's get this done. It's very chilly out right now. Here we're going to get camera number two, which I'm hoping when this starts flooding out, it'll actually go over all this ice. Yeah, see, cameras do a lot better when you're not using panoramic. I never knew why, but I'm hoping we'll get to see something cool on camera number two, and we'll start up camera number two right, right now. now. Woo! And over here, hopefully we get some water to drop and ice start cracking. Because we'll drop this down about a foot or so based on what we got. So let's get down there and start this up. How thick is this ice? It is very cold. Yeah, that's not thick enough. I thought about maybe putting the tripod out there on the ice so you could see me scooping it out, but we're going to have to just do it like this. Oh, there's actually a vehicle coming. Wow. Out here in the middle of nowhere. We'll, let, we'll wait for this one vehicle to go by, and then we'll get down into the water. That guy's probably wondering what I'm doing out here before the sun even comes up in the culvert. Ooh, look at all those swamp gases. Wow, that stinks. It smells like a sewage treatment plant down here. At least now that the water's freezing up, the beavers won't be able to float more supplies over. I can't wait to see what camera number two is seeing. Oh, we just got some to go, wow. Now this is an easy one for the beavers to clog back up. There's so much junk I'm standing in that they can just push in there. They don't live here, they're just flooding the drainage ditch. This is secondary water storage. We're just about done.
There we go, this convenient long stick was here. And I was able, I was able to break, the beavers built the dam in the middle. I built water pressure against it and I actually broke it just now. I still feel a little bit of it. good enough I'm actually getting my feet stuck in the mud it's so sticky in there all right we got that down to the bottom and I don't think that'll be a problem again until the spring because the beavers can't bring over any new material now that that'll drop maybe another six inches or so maybe we'll see some ice cracking Maybe it'll just go down smoothly. That's very thin ice. It would never hold me. So, other side. Unfortunately, it looks like everything's going underneath it. Sometimes when I let debris through, it'll clog up where the water's entering under the ice and it'll flood over the top. Unfortunately, that didn't happen today. Right here we got some very recent deer tracks, very recent, since it snowed. I am very thankful that there's no wind today, because that would have been bad. Because there's no wind, I'm not cold really, my hands are a little numb just from touching the icy water and that wet stick I used to jam everything through, but other than that we did well. The water is down about a foot since we got here. Doing good, let's continue down the road. We were only there maybe 10 minutes and the sun came up a whole bunch since then. Now we can see if that truck that went by followed the smoothest route if we follow this guy's tracks is this going to be the smoothest part avoiding all the potholes All right, everyone, we're doing another check right here before winter gets going to see how this pipe is working. This is the grass clump culvert. The time when we unclogged and it sucked a bunch of clumps of grass through. That's kind of cool, making a little whirlpool of suds right there. Let's see if the culvert's clogged. It's extremely beautiful out this morning over here on the pond. Very nice. It completely froze over. Gonna go look down here at the grate. Um, the grate fell over. For a second I was like, did someone steal it? Here it is. Oh, it's got blockage on it. Look at that. Look at all that crud on it. Let's knock it off a couple more times. 
good enough. This pricker bush so I gotta get through. There we go. Hopefully that'll be good enough until the spring when we come and check on it again. At least now, things will get stuck on the end instead of inside it. Now I got no reason to go check on it, but just because it's so beautiful out this morning with this lighting, I want to go see the next culvert, which is about a mile down the stream. It's on an abandoned road, but let's go check on it just because it's nice out. All right, so we're going to take a right onto this unused road. And it's only going to get worse from here. It's just going to get more and more grown in on the way there to the next pipe. Because they haven't used this road in quite a while. But I think it's really pretty. All the evergreen trees with a nice dusting of snow. The snow is very varying by the elevation. I've seen as much as two inches today, and then there's other areas that barely got a coating on the ground. Now these trees are all the tamarack trees, the only pine trees that lose their needles for the winter. Pretty soon we're gonna come to a den in. We gotta take a left. Should be in just a moment. We're not going terribly far. Only about a mile downstream. straight up there. I don't know if it used to be a road. It may have just been a place for a tractor trailer to do a three-point. And now that we've turned, the road got a little bit worse. A little bit more grown in. And we have arrived. The road in front of me, I've never continued. I'm not sure how far it exactly goes. But this is the next culvert right here downstream. Wow, the road actually looks pretty good compared to when we were here in the summer. I was all grown in. Now you can actually see the tire trails. So we're just getting out for a moment to take a look down here. I like to come down here when we unclog this pipe, especially when that lake up there is backed up multiple feet. We unclog it and come down here to wait because it usually takes at least a half an hour, maybe an hour for the water to make it down this mile to the next culvert pipe. And here we are to the next culvert pipe. Right down in there if you can see it. Yeah, this road, it looks a lot more decent now. This would be a good trail to walk now this time of year when there's no leaves on the ground or no leaves on the trees. Cause this was, this appears to be so grown in in the summertime. Now I'm curious, is this a dead end? Or can I actually go somewhere straight right here? I know it's not gonna go far. This road is not looking good. Does it go to a place I can turn around? Or am I gonna have to back up a whole ton? is overgrown up there. All right, everyone, so now we're at a location I just pulled up on. We had a huge unclogging here back in the summertime. We got the water to drop like three feet and it went well. Then we came back later in the summer, attempted it, got the rake broken off inside the beaver dam, inside the pipe. But the beaver dam was so thick that we couldn't even feel the end of it. So there's that beaver dam that's four feet at least, probably a lot more. 
they probably jammed sticks in there that were like 12 feet long. So there's a very strong beaver dam in here. This road has been flooded now for at least four months. Beavers have washed out a large area causing severe damage. And they wanted more water. So now there's a beaver dam going right here along the entire side of the road. Right here, it's only about a foot tall. Down there, the beaver dam on the edge of the road is over two feet tall. And this is a primary pond, meaning even if I thought I could do it, we will not even touch it this time of year because it will kill the beavers off. This time of year, it's almost impossible to trap a beaver. It's virtually impossible to trap a beaver, and I'll explain why. There is a little bit of open water, so if you put a trap here with maybe a carrot or there's a bunch of other things you can use to catch them. They love carrots, actually. You could probably catch one out of this open water. But give it a couple more days. Once this freezes solid, the beavers very rarely will leave their pond. I've seen it on trail cameras. Yes, they will leave sometimes, but the probability of catching one or them finding the trap with the food is very rare. So we got this massive beaver lodge out here that you can see brand new material on it, but also older material. It looks like it's probably been there a while. And over here, you'll see this giant pile of debris next to it. What is that pile of debris next to it? It's an underwater pile. So the water here is probably three or four feet deep. What they do is they will spend months collecting trees, sticks. They'll basically jam it in the mud. So yeah, there's a giant pile there of sticks. When they get hungry, they come out of the lodge, swim down to it. They'll grab a piece, bring it back up in the lodge. They chew the bark off the stick, and that's basically their food supply. They have a ton of food supply, so they're not leaving the pond looking for the food that's in your trap. It's almost impossible to catch one now. And if you remove their beaver dam, the water level is going to drop with all the ice now trapping their food reserve. It's now going to be open to predators, their beaver lodge, and the beaver's going to die. So you can't trap them and relocate them this time of year. So the humane thing to do is literally wait it out until the spring. The logging company owns this land. It's a private landowner, so they legally can do whatever they want. They can legally drain this pond, killing the beaver off in the dead of winter. But I'm not going to do that. So right here is the pipe. When we unclogged it, the pipe was like a foot below the surface. But they didn't have this giant beaver dam on the edge of the road back then. Now that they have this, we're probably looking at three feet below the surface. And since then... I can tell the bottom here has silted up so much. Yeah, this would be a challenge even actually locating it. Then you're dealing with a gigantic delta P problem, differential pressure. Once you get that open, wrong move, you can get yourself stuck in the pipe. The suction would start up so strong. Now we got a much better view of the beaver's food supply. See it there? That's their food reserve with the giant lodge to the left. I love seeing examples like that. I saw the best example a couple weeks back on a place we call the Bear Road. And this is a pretty good example too. So they weren't satisfied with their pond being what it was in the summer. So they had to build this giant dam along the edge of the entire road. And the dam's not doing very well. It's got a surprising amount of leakage usually beavers aren't this sloppy you see it's not even going over the top it's seeping through the dam but maybe the beavers built this during a time of higher flow it hasn't rained in a bit and it was a very rainy summer so maybe they didn't expect the water to not be flowing as much so the pond is actually at the moment it's like half a foot below capacity but you also got this guy down here with this equipment you can see trimmed all this you can see my orange ribbons there attached to the trees. Either the beaver cut it down or that guy with the trimmer got it. But he's working on removing all the debris here. Because they're working on this road. I imagine they're going to start logging on it again pretty soon. I don't know 100% in this area. This area, I don't know things about the logging company. But it appears that way. They are cleaning up all the brush with that machine. Then they're probably going to dig out the drainage ditches. And with the drainage ditch work, this road has multiple spots that are have water crossing over the top because ditches are clogged, unrelated to the beaver. So I imagine when they do that work, they'll do this too. Get rid of the beavers, unclog that pipe. 
They'll probably do it all in the spring. But this will be an icy mess all winter long. This water flowing over the top, especially as the temperatures start dropping, trucks driving through it, tracking the water, especially up the hill, that'll become super icy as a result. Yeah, they need a lot of drainage ditch work. See, this drainage ditch over on this side comes down the hill and it's supposed to go into there. But if it was to rain, water's gonna come out, spill out into the road. In fact, that's what I see here. This is all erosion because the ditches aren't working properly. This ditch needs to be dug out so it can continue back into the stream bed right there. But as you can see, it's filled in. I also see a lot of these ruts in water. It's coming out of this road, meaning there's an issue. The culvert pipe beneath this machine may have a problem. It says on that machine, the guy is for hire. So based on the ruts, this drainage ditch on that far side of the road is having a problem. Not this pipe. This pipe is not clogged at all. Although this ditch here might need a little bit of work. Maybe not. It's pretty far out. This road when they built it was probably two lanes. Hasn't been used in a while. In the summertime, they just have the little gate open here for the ATVs. Now, they got this open for all the snowmobilers. There's no sign saying I can't drive up here. But in the summertime, I'm... It's they, I'm not allowed to drive up here. Yeah, so this is the problem here, this drainage ditch. See, the drainage ditch comes down the hill, then it just spills into the road. You can't get around that blockage. So it all comes down here and they gotta do a bunch of work. Welp, the beavers have succeeded this year, flooding out the road, clogging the pipe. And we got an angry squirrel out here who doesn't see humans often. Look at all this sediment. All this sediment is coming from out there. And right here, it looks like we have another little beaver dam. It might just be debris getting pushed out of the culvert during uncloggings. So, the last video I made of this place, there was so many comments saying, there's no way that pipe is that big. Well, now we're here on the other side and I can assure you, it is an absolutely huge pipe. The other side only looked two feet because it was so crumpled, but it's actually a big old three foot pipe. Yeah, it looks certainly bigger on this side. This stick right here, or this log, this is actually kind of nice. Look at this, how the beavers chew it all off as their food, as they're building. Boom! Well, that's kind of cool. The ice is so thin, rippling and cracking. I bet the beavers heard that. Look at this really nice piece that the beavers cut. It's actually kind of nice. I think I'm gonna keep that piece. I like how that stick is chewed, so yeah, I'm gonna keep that one piece. All right, let's get back on the road. succeeded at this spot this year. The blockage was just too big.
Look how twisty and windy the road is. backing up a little bit because I'm I was like am I even in the right spot this looks so different I was like so thrown off I haven't been to this spot in a couple months and this was a little tiny narrow dirt trail a couple months ago it was covered in mud flooded by beavers now they must have put so many dump trucks in here to raise the road up this road was overgrown it's now two lanes and look at the beaver swamp. I see all their beaver debris right there off to the side, just thrown and destroyed. This whole beaver swamp is unrecognizable to the right. Wow, their lodge is still there, but they're definitely not here. Wow, I don't even recognize this road anymore. It's so different. I'll have to put a link in the description to what this looked like before. Completely unrecognizable. Yeah, very unrecognizable. They just redid that entire area. This whole road is replaced. This road is elevated all over the place. They must have put so many dump trucks worth of fill into this. This was like an off-road trail a couple months ago. Now it's looks like they're getting ready to be very active out here with logging. hunting for. It is deer season so that's probably what he's out looking for. Moose season just ended. I wonder how far this road's going to go now that they fixed it. There was a gate up here. Is it still gated? No. Wow, it's actually reactivated this logging road. Where, where this guy, this is probably the guy who's parked here hunting. There was parking spaces here and a gate. You could not come any further unless you were an ATV or a snowmobile. Wow, they now I this is a whole new place to explore. Wow. Up here there was another beaver swamp. I wonder what that looks like now. I have not actually been down here in a few years because I had to park and walk down here to see it. I remember it being a little bit of a walk, so let's see how it looks. They did a lot of logging out here. All off to the sides is all cut down. This road is very elevated, looking good. It's in such good shape. This was a muddy trail that was so overgrown when I walked down here maybe a year or two ago that I was afraid of rubbing against all the bushes. It was so overgrown. I was afraid of ticks. Here we are. Around this next corner was a beaver swamp. And the beaver dam was like six feet tall. Beautiful swamp. I wonder what it has become now. Is this the corner? No. It's like a turnaround for the trucks. I guess I walked a bit further then. Got more parking spaces. Well, it looks like they did not log down to where the road is destroyed. And I know my vehicle won't be able to pass down here for far. Yeah, I'm definitely not going down there. But I'm going to back up to that parking space right here because I'm going to walk down here and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's not passable to a vehicle. Only an ATV. So we're going to just park right here off to the side. They did an awful lot of work out here. Down here in this little valley, this looks beautiful. I can tell the trees down there are a bit older since it would be too challenging for them to log it easily. So it looks like they left some older trees alone. And they did a lot of logging out here all summer. 
I wonder if they'll reopen the road any further in the upcoming year. Yeah, so I was not going to take the vehicle any further down here. Someone went walking down here very recently. So this part of the road is, you can see, in very bad shape. And there's someone down here right now. I just want to show the beaver dam we got down here. Okay, very muddy. Ooh. Good thing I got the big high boots on. Yeah, the gigantic beaver pond is still out here. But the thing is, the beavers always cause problems down here, so if they reactivate this part of the road, they're probably going to trap the beaver because they keep causing problems underneath this bridge. Obviously, the bridge would have to be replaced. They'd probably put a big culvert in to be cheaper if they were going to reopen it for logging. Yeah, they recently maybe sliced that, but that's the big six-foot-tall beaver dam. Huge, big body of water up there. And like everything else, that ice is probably less than an inch thick. Couldn't walk out there. This is one rough road. This would take a lot of effort to get it back open again. The only one keeping this part of the road open is the ATVs, and they love it because this is very challenging section of road, very muddy from beavers. Oh, that's really stinky. I wonder if there's moose poop in there. It smells like manure. water other than that to rinse it off really stinky in here I'll probably hop out at the next stream it's a bad smell it's like very fermented manure I got some water on the floor in there but I gotta try to get as much of this off me as possible this is very stinky so I'm gonna go down in the water here I just got out at the spot of road that they just really filled it in this year. It's in the road you gotta watch out for, not to bottom out on. But down here at the bottom of this hill is where the issue is. It's not flowing right now because it's kind of dry, but it probably would tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to rain. There's this flooded area with a bunch of mud, causing everyone to have to come up here onto the shoulder to get around it. And eventually someone's gonna end up hitting these rocks because they're very high if you try to drive a car down here. So right up here at this lower part of the road, there is a culvert pipe. You can actually see the hump. The beavers were here for multiple years, and we were always unclogging this section of road. Woo, stinky swamp gases here. This isn't very much better. Now I'm actually dirtier, but hopefully not as stinky. Maybe I'll find cleaner water over on the other side. So that beaver lodge was actually brand new like a year ago. It looked really nice. Yeah, they definitely put some new pipes in. Because this is the pipe that we were always unclogging. Now this is all going down to a brand new pipe. Here we got some good water without all the mud. Yeah, that's the one we were always unclogging, so now that'll be acting as their secondary pipe. I actually was walking in here last year showing off this beaver swamp. While it was frozen, water was way up here, frozen. We walked right up to the beaver lodge right there. They're all definitely gone. Success. Not as stinky in here anymore. Doing another check at a very popular be beaver destination. And the road here, just from a little bit of more traffic, this is actually a little bit slippery. I'm not feeling it with the studded tires. 
there's not enough snow on the road to have chains be a necessary item yet. So look at all this debris we pulled out of the culvert pipe earlier in the spring. And over here, every time we let a bunch of it go through, we had to kind of move it off to the sides. Some of that right there was also done with the excavator. Down there, that culvert was replaced because that body of water and this body of water are connected through the back. So the beavers would be an issue at both at the same time. Beavers were a huge problem back in the spring with a whole bunch of uncloggings. They were trapped. Not a single problem all summer. Now we are back here and I think there might be a problem again because the water is now higher than it was when we were out here a month ago. It looks higher again. And they relocated these beavers two years ago also and they came back. Okay the ice here is a little bit thicker than other spots. Let's take a look in here. Ah! Beavers are back. We got beavers again here. Alrighty. So, let's evaluate this. So, beavers cannot do anything else this winter because the pond's frozen over. Will it stay frozen over? Probably not. It'll be warmer in a couple days, and that's not a lot of ice. Let's get down here, see if we can do anything. Wasn't expecting this one to have a problem again. So let's get in here and see what we got. Don't have to deal with spider friends, I don't think, this time of year. Not the biggest beaver dam we ever dealt with here. And of course the beavers are back because we've investigated this spot before. There's a massive body of water being held up by a beaver dam, like the size of a lake. If they trap the ones that move down here, eventually more are just going to move down again. Didn't expect it this fast though. So, already got the big high boots on. I think we're going to go ahead and get on in there. Alright everyone, we're all geared up. I got my headlamp on. Camera number, number two, two is, is going. going. Okay. okay. Got the insulated gloves on, so if I do get water in them, my body will quickly heat it up. So I'll only be cold for a minute like a wetsuit. So, um, yeah, I definitely forgot something, but we'll do it anyways. Not worth it. I did forget a bigger light, but I think we got it right now the way we are. All I gotta do is, I'll just use the flash on the camera. It should be enough. Yeah, that's plenty. Put you guys upside down. All right, let's try to get this one done. It's very cold out here. Said there might not be enough current to actually push it out, but that's okay. This loose stuff will get taken by the spring thaw if not. Since this time of year the beavers won't be able to really do anything about it. This dam is a little bit frozen, but not bad enough where we can't tear it apart. At least I don't think so.
See this? Look at all this mud frozen together. So we're like peeling off a frozen layer of mud on the top, exposing everything that's wet. Right now, I'm basically destroying the structure of the dam so we can open the water at once and hopefully get some of this out of here. getting so muddy on this one. Right, we are, we got it, the whole dam is gone. Now this stuff should be pretty easy for me to just go ahead and pull out of here. It's taking the breath out of removing that stuff. Here we go, it's all moving, come on. There we go, it's all moving.
Nice, we got it all out. Now that we got it flowing good, I'm heading back in to get the little bit that's still in there. We also got some giant chunks of ice in here flowing with me. Good thing the ice isn't that thick now. So you don't want to be in there when there's huge pieces coming through. Although the water's not going that fast. I've unclogged culverts in the past. The ice coming through is potentially dangerous. It's so big that it slams into you. Now we got full current to get all this out of the way. Now it's going to really speed up in the pipe. Still hearing more ice chunks break off. All right, we did good. Look at the ice slam into me. It keeps breaking off from the other side, and I got these ice chunks just slamming against me. If they were like a couple inches, they'd hurt. But these are too thin to have enough momentum to hurt. So we're gonna leave camera number two going. And let's see if we can go break a whole bunch and send ice through here just for fun. Wow, we got that going a lot better than I thought. And if this pond surface thaws, the beavers will have it clogged again before winter. If not, they'll have to wait until the spring. So this ice here, it can hurt when it slams into you if you're working in one of these pipes. Let's break off some pieces and see if you can see it over on camera number two. Here's a big one. See, those things can get going fast. I had a few hit me, but they're not big enough yet. Let's break off a little bit more just for fun. Send them on through the pipe. The ice is a lot thicker away from the pipe because next to the pipe where it's moving a bit, it froze last. Out here, is, we're actually close to an inch. Wow, this piece is huge. Can it keep together as it goes through? I see some fractures, but it might keep together and you might see it on camera number two. Woo, here it goes. Here it goes. Just came out the other side. Oh. Did it go around the corner or did it get stuck? Sending through a couple more. Let's race it to the other side. I saw something there. There it is. Now that's clear ice. 
I wish the ice was white. If it was white with a lot of air in it, you'd be able to see it so much better over here. That little job there didn't seem like much, but it took the breath out of me from having to be in there that weird angle with my legs bent combined with moving that heavy slop. I'm exhausted and I shouldn't be. I just woke up a couple hours ago. Got a good night's sleep, I feel like. So that'll drop back the pond now about a foot or so. It, it didn't look like much, but there was a lot of water held back. Oh, that scared me. There's more stuff cracking. Oh, it's the entire surface of the pond now is starting to make violent cracking noises. Especially on the edges where it's hung up on things. Cool. Yeah, this will drop back about a foot or so. A lot of times it's a spectacular scene when the ice is a lot thicker and it gets hung up on rocks and things in there because as it drops, it gets stuck on anything in there. Looks pretty cool. I am covered in mud all over the place. That was a dirty job. Hear all the ice in the distance cracking like crazy now. The water's dropping. It's not the biggest pond. It's also not the smallest. It'll take a good portion of the day for this to drop back where it's supposed to be. I knew just driving over this, not seeing the bathtub ring around the edge, that it was filled back up by the beavers. And if this pipe doesn't stay unclogged, the beavers will be capable of washing out the road again. Right over here next to where I parked is the low spot. They build the road like that on purpose. They'd rather it wash out away from the pipe so the pipe doesn't sustain damage in the washout. Then they don't have to go searching for the pipe in the woods or find a replacement. They can just simply go ahead and come in with a few dump trucks to get it out of the way. The logging company was even nice enough to work with the beavers, but beavers didn't cooperate, so they had to trap them, and they're going to have to trap them again now that they're back. See that over there? Either someone stole it, or they removed part of it. I'm assuming someone stole it. That's part of a beaver deceiver. A thing they put on the end of the pipe, where the beavers aren't supposed to know how the water's getting through, but they always figure it out. I think someone stole it. They always abandon plastic pipes in the wilderness and never come out to pick them up. It's just a matter of time before the beavers find this pipe. They usually clog this pipe up along with that one. But when I drove over, there was no evidence of it. This is usually all flooded too. Up there, there's a beaver swamp with an abandoned lodge now. All right, that was a good successful one there. Did not expect to really find much of anything, but I knew just driving over the top that we'd have something. I thought this was kind of cool. In here, the old gravel pit where they get filled to repair the roads. They also use this as a shooting range. But take a look at this. Since it snowed, Look how the hill's kind of falling apart. I thought that looked kind of cool. Or maybe some animal up there started it, but I think it's just collapsing slowly over time, little bits of it. But that looks kind of cool over the fresh snow. Over here at the other part, you see all the trees slowly falling over into it. All right, everyone, we're back about two hours later after unclogging this. Let's see how it's doing. Still flowing a good amount, and that means this is going to go a lot longer than I originally thought. Because when we got here, remember, there was nothing coming out of this pipe. And eventually, it's going to have to go back to nothing. Now, this I've never noticed in the past before. The entire downstream is flooded. Can you see this? whole area in here is flooded. That means there has to be another beaver dam downstream. I've never seen it flood like that before. We come over to the other side. Look at this, the ice is dropping. It's cracking all around the edges and that's why all the water is exposed there. Yeah, it's gone down quite a bunch. I can still hear it cracking a bunch. Cool.
And over there where I was parked before, you can see the vehicle melted a whole area. Well, we still got the big high boots on and I could go ahead and clean them off. There's a lot of mud on there. Before we leave, I kind of want to go down here and investigate a little why this is all flooded. Maybe we can find the answer. That's flowing good. Yeah, wow. And this whole downstream area is flooding. There's got to be a beaver dam holding this up. That's a lot of water. Look at this whole area downstream that just got flooded out from all that release. This is a big spot. I could spend a lot of time in here and I don't think we would find the beaver dam. At least the water's pretty shallow I'm walking through. Lots of stinky gas bubbles. Like right below the surface, see this? There's ice. So this was water, but it's about, I'd say, eight inches higher than it was before we released this water. See, there's lots of beaver cut marks. So yes, there's definitely beavers living here. There's definitely a beaver dam somewhere. So this is probably going to become a brand new beaver pond. They'll cut down all these trees they've flooded out to make the dam higher. Eventually maybe backing up to the road. So it was inevitable that the beavers would eventually come back here. This place is huge. I don't think we'd find the beaver dam unless I spent hours in here looking for it. It would blend in a little too easy. I'm going around a different way. See, there's the pipe there. Woo! Look at all those stinky gas bubbles. It's like glue what I'm walking through. You know, it really stinks. Wow. Wow, that stinks. Look, the beavers recently cut down this. It looks like by the bark, their aspen knocked it into the water. They ate every little bit. That's their food, their bark. I'm having trouble even walking in this. The mud is so thick. It's like walking through peanut butter. I could easily get stuck right here. Lots of gases being released here. Not as slippery as you'd expect. I guess. Whoop. It's a big area. Now if the beavers would just stay here and do this, there wouldn't be much of a problem. We're going on a little adventure. This is all cut by beavers. This place is massive. Can't even begin to see where this ends. This is a giant flood. So I guess I got my point across how hard this would be to actually locate a beaver lodge out here. But it would be nice to figure out where the dam is. 
We're actually to the other culvert pipe that they mess with on the road. Lots of chewed down trees. Over here, there's a ton of trees that are chewed. And an area with a ton of chewed trees, chances are they might be kind of close to their beaver lodge. And you notice all the trees they're cutting down, they're not touching any of the evergreens because they don't taste good. They will only cut down the evergreens if they're desperate and have nothing else to build a dam with, but they won't eat it. This place is extensive. And all these spots I'm walking in now, anything below eight inches by the evidence of ice that didn't rise with the water is from that release we did two hours ago. This is another giant section. Just last year, there was logging equipment coming through here. See, this is actually a little road coming right through where we are for the log skid. Now this area, the ice actually came up with it. I don't even know if we could call that ice. It's more of slush frazzle ice but now that we're walking a bit more I'm hearing water I think we're getting close to the dam it's so quiet out here except for the airplane in the sky I hear that we can maybe figure out where this is it's gonna be way harder to trap these beavers this time since they apparently live a lot further away. Oh my gosh, this beaver dam's huge. Oh, I don't know if you can see under the water, like eight inches below is ice that didn't rise. Look, watch this. Yeah, there's ice that's like eight inches below. And I'm actually stepping on it. There's like ice here. And there's another layer. Oh, so that's what this is. Since the water went up eight inches, it's starting to freeze again. That's how cold it is. You hear that loud noise? Something like a grouse bird just took off. Yeah, look. By unclogging up there that culvert pipe two hours ago, we literally brought their pond to capacity. Yeah, it's up, almost up to the top of the dam. So that means the beavers are probably happy about this, that unclogging. Well, certain beavers are. But these beavers that built this are probably the ones who clogged the culvert pipe. They're all about having additional water sources backing up water everywhere. Multiple ponds that they, that they don't even live at. Now this right here is probably a tree stump from the logging company that a seed fell on. This tree started growing, but the tree stump, the rotten one it was growing on, is now gone. So here's the water leaving the beaver swamp, and here's the beaver dam. That looks pretty new. Nice. Looks like back in here, a lot of iron bacteria that just recently started flowing. So one big beaver dam let's follow it it goes all the way through the woods right here got a lot of iron oxidizing bacteria right here and you can tell this was just a little puddle before we got some current going through here so this dam starts up there that's huge nearly a hundred feet maybe 70 feet would be a better estimate now right here because it was easy for them now this is built with mostly evergreen fir trees yeah we brought their dam to capacity it's spilling in so many spots 
I bet they're probably happy about this. Yeah, all this water here is going around it. This is very nice, this beaver swamp. I like it. Now, I wonder if they have another dam. The land just seems like they might have another dam. Maybe. It smells good out here too. Whole area smells like pine. All right, let's get back to the road. Driving by, you would never even know what's in there. That beaver pond has such a huge area flooding the woods. And it will take quite a while for it to eventually affect the road. Since the beaver dam is so wide, it'll take them a while to get it up. And I do suspect somewhere there might be a second beaver dam. What I mean is there might be an, because they had to fill in a valley with a beaver dam. There might be another little valley they had to fill in. But this is the beaver pond backing up to almost the road. It won't be another it won't be a problem unless it gets another two or three feet deep. Then it would start frost heaving, but it wouldn't be quite backing up into the road yet. They still got tons of water going down there. I can compare it to this morning. It feels like it's getting real warm already. It's, we're expected to get close to the freezing mark, so this will probably Th start thawing out tomorrow's gonna be way above freezing a couple of days it'll be way above freezing for a while so everything's gonna melt i think hopefully the beavers don't get another dam in this pipe before the spring i hope today's video was interesting everybody thanks for watching and have a great day uh We got a spider friend that hitched a ride in the vehicle. You can see the spider friend right now walking on the dashboard. Well, so I probably scraped against something in the woods and on my way back into the vehicle, he probably started walking back around because spiders, they'll go into like a suspended state all winter while, yeah, they'll make their hearts slow down real slow and they can survive the winter but now that he brought him in here he kind of woke up and if I throw him back outside with such a sudden freeze I don't know what that'll do to the spider so we'll leave him walk around on the dashboard if I can find him I'll just bring him in the house and let him walk around the basement let him live in there for the winter doesn't matter
that ice in there had really no structure to it. It broke way too easy because the temperature's rising a bit.